Oh my god. They pulled me back really fast. Oh. Welcome back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I have oh I feel like I'm not quite in my like I have an ice cream headache or something. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm not quite in right. <laughs> But just saw, just do what I saw on YouTube, where they grab the nose and snap the mask back, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that was an awesome question, Nazi. I've always wondered about it, and I've asked so many different teachers, mm -hmm. and everyone had different answers. Um, and I thought that an old yoga system would know these answers, but their answers was different. It makes well, more sense what they said. I mean, you're connected, but the soul's like setting everything up. But they were showing me, they were showing me like, oh my God, it was like they were showing me a thousand different situations where a child is born and it goes like up through the first three years or only in the first week, you know, of or like miscarriages or abortions. Like they showed me, it was like a thousand at once. Oh, wow. So and everyone was a different situation. But what I saw was the only ones who suffered any trauma were like humans already alive. And that was based on, you know, the karmic lessons, uh, whatever they were going through. Like, in no way do I wish to demean or belittle. You know, I, I had a miscarriage 20 years ago, and I'm still, you know, still... Um, in sorrow but you know these things do happen and they're for us to grow from and learn from but they're they're not always planned sometimes they are sometimes like they showed every kind of situation and in every situation the soul of the child Absolutely fine, just filled with love from start to finish, no matter what happened. So. I mean, it's similar with death. Like, you know, if, if someone you love dies, um, yeah. they're happy. They're, they're not in pain or anything. You're the one remaining who's the suffering, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's similar the same way as the entry point. So I, you know, I just, I've never really realized because some people say up to like three weeks or, or uh, three months, there's no soul, you know. Yeah. And they were showing it's unique to the person. Yeah. Like if you're a younger soul, mm -hmm. it's quicker, you're, you attach quicker. If you're the older soul, you're probably going to be evaluating. <laughs> hey, should I really be? <laughs> you know um uh, yeah and and but in essence i think as like i think it's solidified once the baby is born that's it yeah i mean it's it, in general yeah but then they were showing like the um one of the reasons why for so it's like the dalai lama people like that or or even some of us here um, why it's not a hundred percent till older is because that allows you to stay in greater communication during your early formative years. Um, and it allows for your guides to really watch over you and for you to be really well supported in your is early that, years. So there what, is, you hmm? don't have any memory of your early years. Like I have no memory of anything beyond six years old i don't know i mean i remember back to when i was a newborn so yeah but <laughs> you <laughs> i know 
<laughs> you were born seeing all your lives, you know, but um, yeah. I mean, I still remember the first time my brother looked at me <laughs> and met me and I was, and he, yeah. And everything he said to me when he met me, mm. telling me like, I'm your big brother. I'm going to look out for you and all that, you know, so. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really funny. Like, I forget when wasn't that long ago, maybe a decade ago, I told him, you know, I still feel so happy about that. And he's like, how do you even remember that? <laughs> said, do you remember? And he said, yeah, I remember it. We like, good. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so <sighs> Melena, I got to tell you, they had so much um, compassion for you and your question they really felt like there was no way for them to answer your question just with words. They, they just, because you, you are such a powerful, you know, they called you a sorceress of love, you know? Yeah. I believe that. You know, uh, Nancy and I had a conversation about this. It wasn't just, uh, we, we, uh, we both wonder because it, it seems like, and I understand why they are detached because the, you know, they, um, they look at the, they have the big picture. They know that life is eternal. They know that, that we've had many lives and, and we've greed many times and ultimately it's just for soul growth. But um, when you think of kind of like thinking of the Holocaust, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that uh, you're going to grieve anytime you see that. Yeah. Anytime masses and masses of people uh, lose their life, it, you know, one person is dying is, oh yeah, I'm sorry. But many people dying, that's, that's a tragedy. That's, you know, it really touches you at a soul level. A bus, you know, several, any, anytime, several souls leave at the same time under tragic circumstances is just painful and so you have the love for and and we know that there's a plan and then we, we hear but then there's the heart and then there's the mm -hmm. you know uh and we're supposed to be here to love <laughs> so <laughs> yeah but you know they were showing me when they were talking with you they were showing me images and they were saying like in the Holocaust, most of the people who died had no choice. Okay. Their soul contracts were violated. Like they had no choice. Um, many of the, and then they were showing me snapshots of what's happening all around the world now. And they were showing like the places in revolution, the places where there's like uh, with the COVID-19, they're trying to, they're basically denying health care to the impoverished so that they'll all catch COVID and die. And that's not going in any of the records or the documents. And they're like, and in our country where people are given all the information and huge amounts of people are choosing not to do what they need to do. Um, and then all the others who are suffering because of it, they were as well as all the other tragedies happening all around the world right now. And then they were showing like all the climate, global climate change tragedies. And they were saying what happened in the Holocaust happened because a few amount of people decided to murder and torture and distress a huge amount of people and they succeeded. In this situation, it's because humanity, like we know what to do. We're torturing ourselves. We know what to do and we're choosing not to do it. Not all of us, but many humans. And in the process are taking a lot of victims with them in many different ways, not just COVID-19, in so many ways. And they're distressed by that too. That's not what they want to see. What they want to see is all of humanity coming together and 
saying, how can we bring healing from this point going forward? So I think they hope that each of us will have that attitude of from this moment forward, how can I be a part of healing? How can I heal myself? How can I bring healing to others? Yes, and, and they said they would show us how to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, they've been sharing lessons with us, like yes. meditating with trees, going back in time and bringing energy. These are powerful. These are powerful. Absolutely. You know, it's important that each of us take the lessons they give us and apply it to our work, to empower our work, that we don't become like students at the temple of the librarians and give them our power for them to do the work. Like they're empowering us so that we can give the lessons they share and they'll share any lessons we want. So if you're feeling stuck with something and you want a lesson on how to like make something better in your life or in your uh, energetic work, I mean, I, I wouldn't trust them so much on 3D life advice, like, because, you know, I follow their advice and the next thing you know, I'm unemployed and homeless. So, you know, <laughs> like, I wouldn't ask them so much, like, how can I get a promotion and more money? Because they're terrible at that advice. <laughs> But when it comes to go on the road, exactly. I mean, that's pretty much what they'll tell everyone to do. <laughs> but if you ask them about, like, say, okay, I'm studying Reiki and I want to work with a shaman and I want to do this or that, they can really give you great advice on how to use your interests or your questions to become super empowered. You know, they're, they're an amazing tool for us to build our planet to be what we want it to be. Thank you. Well, listen, you all have a wonderful night. I'm so glad we met tonight. I think they redeemed themselves. I from, <laughs> no, seriously, like from last week. Uh, it was really, it really left a, um, a very uh, profound of, uh, effect on me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even describe it, but it wasn't very pleasant. Last week was rough. Yeah. It was rough. And I got to tell you, being the body they speak through, Last week was really rough for me because I felt responsible, even though I'm like, how can you use my body to say stuff like that? <laughs> anyway, you go rest yeah. your body, Bonita. <laughs> but you guys, you know what? I'm just going to say one more thing. Um, some of us, uh, especially those of us who do the Tuesday group, earlier this year, we watched a recording of Sai Mom giving her a uh, vision and her work, you know, her words for the coming year. And um, afterwards, her assistant, her divine assistant spoke with us and answered our questions. It was a very powerful experience. But one of the things Saima was saying, and keep in mind, this woman is like as divine as they become. She's just like so profound and all seeing. And she said, look, I have been feeding energy to you. I've been feeding my energy to all of you. It is time for you to stand up on your feet and nourish yourselves. Like she was being really serious. She said, things are coming this year. You need to be in your own power. Yep. And she got a little rough with everyone. So I... I I think that um, I'll, I'll find that video and I'll send it to you guys because um, she, Who is this? Sai Ma. Um, I'll tell you what, I will find her the link to her YouTube channel and to that video in specific. And I'll send you Sundara Fawn's information and I'll also send you to the link, the link to the class that we took on um, walk-ins so that if you guys are interested in any of that, you can explore. 
I find all of that illuminating, especially since everything that they say is exactly what the librarians have been telling us, but from different perspectives. Oh yeah, I'd be interested in all that. Yeah. Where's the Tuesday class? Oh, it's, um. there's a group of us who, some are in this group. There's a group of us that have been like meditating together for like a million years every Tuesday night. Yeah. I've been the, to that like two, two times, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, um, uh, it's been going on for like a million years and we just get together every Tuesday night and meditate. They're pretty Is that the one that used to meet at the Unity Church? Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, all right. So you guys, I love you all so much. Love you, everybody. Thank bye. you. Love you guys. Yep, love bye. you. Great Thank question. You. Bye, Kitty. Thank you. Bye.